Hey y'all, this is Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com. We're going to talk about advanced extreme, I guess, suppose, solutions to fixing death wobble. Making a permanent solution that actually solves the problem. You know, the, the key to this, this whole situation is caster. Having enough caster angle uh, in the alignment to be able to settle down the, the, the shopping cart effect of, you know, the death wobble. And it's terrifying. Death wobble is terrifying, especially this man's wife refuses to drive the truck until it gets straight. So I sold this excursion. This is a uh, big dog ultra that I sold, I don't know, two years ago, a little over two years ago. And we've had some death wobble issues with this truck. And the man that owns it's pretty meticulous. I mean, he uh, he's a good technician. He understands, and he's done a bunch of stuff himself. Um, we put a, a different steering box, a tighter steering box. So one of the things we do with the alignment is we set zero toe. Factory Ford likes to toe in about one degree, half a degree, and this kind of settles around the centering of the steering wheel at speed. And you can run a little looser steering box if you tow in because you don't feel the truck wander as much. If you set to zero toe, you get a whole bunch more tread life. I mean, your tires double in, in life uh, if you if you do a zero toe. So, you know, we like the zero toe, but if you have a, a, a factory steering box or any of these rebuilt steering boxes, the truck will wander. So we had to go with a blue top. I think we started with a red top, went to a blue top. Uh, we've done some front end pieces. Uh, I've, you know, like COVID seemed to have really affected the quality of some of the parts that we've gotten. Uh, ball joints and, and tie rod ends and such from Ford have seemed to have dropped in quality. Uh, we are exploring the kryptonite brand. Uh, we have a couple kryptonite parts on the front here, an end-link bushing on, on the track bar. End-link bushing on the track bar is a kryptonite part uh, after a couple of those. Um, and, you know, different sets of wheels because he would go down the road and it would just seem to settle, set it, settle into this, this, this harmonic uh, in the front end. Now, you know, I think the wheels and the tires were a bit extreme, but that's what he felt he had to do um, uh, to try to get it right. <clears throat> You know, it's then the dual, he's got dual dampeners under there from uh, Bilstein and Bilstein shocks. The Bilstein shocks uh, are the, the Bilstein steering stabilizers seem to settle it down, but it um, really is just uh, masking the symptom. It's like taking ibuprofen for the flu. Yeah, you'll feel a little better, but it really doesn't solve the problem, you know. So what we're doing here is we're taking a kind of an extreme position on this truck to see if we could really solve the problem once and for all. Now one of the things that I notice about this truck that greatly affects the, the caster angle, okay, and the caster angle is the angle on which the, it's like this, this, like if you see a rod, positive caster is like this, and this is the, the angle on which that front wheel turns, okay. Um, Ford Motor Company likes to set it up a little further forward like this because it makes it easier to back the truck and at low speeds it's fine but at freeway speeds uh, when you have uh, too much negative caster it starts to cause the, the death wobble of course and and so we're trying to get more caster out of this setup but the thing I notice is that the rear ends a little low now I set this truck up a couple years ago with with fairly soft springs for ride quality but you know the owner here likes to do some towing with it and so it seems as though I may not have as strong a spring as I should have uh, and that rear end being low and the front end being a little high changes that angle it kind of changes the angle of that swing arm underneath there and wants it, to, wants it to come like this so the other thing I noticed I actually drove this truck 500 miles up here from Florida and I noticed that it it wants to yaw down the road it's got this it's got this kind of uh, wandering where it, where it wants to roll like this and it became very clear to me that the springs were simply too soft for the truck um, and you know well, what causes this well you know they were used springs when I put them on there we don't put used springs on these excursions anymore I use new Michigan's so we're gonna upgrade to that um, we're going to um, take a look at the lower control arms um, we're gonna uh, and we're, we're gonna put a proper alignment on it with enough caster in it but I think that getting the ride height set with the proper springs and uh, is going to make a huge uh, difference in terms of getting this caster straight. Now he's put the bushings on there on the front and that's a big help, but it just doesn't get us the caster that we need. He's throwing his hands up, his wife won't drive it because she's scared of the damn thing and I don't blame her. Um, I couldn't get it to oscillate while I on 500 mile trip, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. And it did seem kind of wandery to me. I'm quite sure that this, uh, the new springs will make a huge difference in terms of the ride quality of this vehicle. All right, new rear springs without helpers. You cannot run helper springs on a excursion because uh, the, the helper spring is a, an additional spring that exists out here in a lot of your heavy towing trucks and such. 
and as a result of the, you, you, you can't run this on an excursion because the on the right side, the helper will get up into the AC lines and destroy them. You know, ask me how I know this. I learned this the hard way and had to hunt and find and buy uh, AC lines for an excursion because we tried to run helper springs on an excursion. It's like, nah, wrong answer. Learn the hard way. Go spend money needlessly learning your lesson. Anyway, so we're going with a 3,000 pound spring. Um, this is, there's another step beyond this, 3,600 that you can go with from Michigan. Uh, we bought springs from Michigan for years, had real good luck with them. Uh, it's uh, truckspring.com. Um, so then we're going with a standard set of 250 coils on the front. Okay. And then the other part that we're going with is an adjustable lower control arms on the front. Uh, these are really, I mean, the, 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 the size of the bushing is massive. Uh, it's got a slotted here, so where it attaches to the front differential, it allows us to kick that front differential, the bottom of it out, and be able to get as much caster as possible. Here's the adjustment cams. Um, we can also center, by the use of this, we can also center the front differential underneath the truck so that it's square to the rear end, um, and so it tracks straight down the road. And in addition to this, we're going to run drop brackets that allow us to drop the, the, the control arm eye down a little bit and so we can get a little more caster out of it. That, okay, but we want to solve this problem. Um, you know, the folks that own this vehicle have a large family and they're, they're committed to the vehicle. I mean, they, they really need and want the vehicle. I mean, it's, it's a pain that every time they go somewhere they've got to take two vehicles because of kids and such. So, um, you know, it's, it's imperative that this vehicle drive correctly down the road. So for y'all that are hunting part numbers, there's the part number for the spring. Okay, rear spring. There's the part number for the front springs. Okay, these were you know actually bought off of eBay. Um, the drop brackets are fairly standard stuff. I Maybe mean, you can find them all over the place. Uh, Super lift. Uh, supplied the front control arms. It's pretty much a standard control arm for F-250s. Of course, now I've converted the suspension to a the late model suspension, so it no longer has the leaf springs in the front, which is kind of the whole point here. Uh, but this is the part number for the uh, lower the re replacement lower control arm. So that's a pretty beefy control arm. I mean, that's that's a pretty badass piece right there, man. I mean, that's a that. That eyelet is a huge upgrade. So, yeah, we're, we're this is the this is there's the part numbers for you. So if you want to go hunt them and price them, all right, we're going to save y'all some pain here. Turns out that this 880 HD front spring is the wrong spring. That's a two-wheel drive spring. Okay, two-wheel drives have this curve in it, and so if you go over here to a two-wheel drive truck, that's the way it mounts in the upper spring pocket on a two-wheel drive truck. Okay, so 880 is incorrect. See, it sits, it has a spot right here where the spring goes into. Well, four-wheel drive doesn't have that. So, we had to order some more in, next day air, you know. Two-wheel drive will not go into the upper spring pocket, and the, you know, that little piece up there. So, we have to get them in, we had to order them next day air, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So, don't order the 880, okay, XHDs, that's incorrect part number. What you need is the 350-1207 HD, and that's a stock half inch, one inch increase. It's very slight increase in ride height. So I guess Spot's going to get a new set of front springs. God knows he's earned them all these years of carrying heavy things. Yay, Spot. All right, the old parts out with the old and in with the new. Look at that, new springs under there. Yay, new spare springs. Really interested to see what the ride height is on this truck. Good. The good news is, is Michigan Spring came through with next day. Okay. Now, these guys at Michigan Spring don't play because we ordered this at four o'clock yesterday, and they were here by ten o'clock this morning in Beaufort, Georgia. And of course, they're in Michigan. So these are the correct springs. We're going to get those installed today, and then see what she looks like. See how she sits. I can't even begin to tell you about the difference in ride quality in this vehicle. Um, by changing out the, the, the tired springs for the newer, um, you know, stiffer springs, I suppose, but they, it's just they work right, uh, and springs do wear out. 
I mean, this is a you know approaching 258,000 mile vehicle, and in the and I don't know how many how many miles the vehicle had on it that I took the springs out of when I built this truck you know, almost three years ago. So, but on the freeway and, and over the roads with the with the good Bilstein shocks and the um, and the and the double steering stabilizer and the the tight steering box and all the other parts that have been put on this vehicle, I, I, I can't begin to tell you how good the drivability and the ride quality of this vehicle is. I mean, it's it's just nice and firm and doesn't it lost that rolly bit that it had, you know, going down the road. I mean, we're in this thing with these nice Michelin tires and she just glides. I mean, she just glides down the freeway. I mean, right on up to as fast as you want to go. I mean, and you can see my hands. I mean, it's just nice and smooth. Steers nice, runs nice. I mean, that's that's what you want. So we, we've really improved the uh, the uh, original design, um, not just by doing the Big Dog Ultra suspension upgrade, uh, uh, but also by putting new springs in it and going with new ones. Now it costs more money, of course, uh, but you know what? It uh, actually makes sense uh, on a 20-year-old vehicle at this point, or approaching 20 years old, uh, to, to just go ahead and, and do what's necessary and, and put the new parts on it. I mean, it really uh, uh, is just, this is this transformed this vehicle uh, from you know where it originally was with all leaf springs, then to the the coil springs, and they were you know. But now we've stepped a whole another step uh, in the ride quality. I mean, it's 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 spectacular. I mean, it's just absolutely one of the most beautiful driving vehicles uh, I think I've ever driven. That's a pretty sophisticated machine you got there, Wes. Look at that. This isn't like the old days where you had to hook like wires and yeah. and pieces of uh, jack of all, string what? And yeah, the string. <laughs> it, I've done so. a few. I've done a few clothesline type alignments back in the day. A little bubble level. Yeah, a little bubble level. <laughs> That's state of the art. Hawkeye, huh? This isn't even a. A hunter machine anymore? Yeah, it's a hunter. Oh, it is. Just call it for oh, that's there. That's there. Oh, it is a hunter. Yeah. Okay. So you turn the wheels back and forth. And... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're after now. Interesting. Very sophisticated. God, that's a whole lot easier than what I remember alignments being. But you got to have the right tools if you're going to know what to do. That's incredible. So we, we've gotten from about four to over twelve. That's a lot of caster, man. He's got it packed out. Yeah. Which yeah. means we've got plenty of room to play from it. Yeah. That's so cool. what's the full range it'll do? Twelve down if twelve is the max. Well I you know, we kinda you know, we kinda threw the kitchen sink at it by putting the, the drop brackets and the uh, and the adjustable lower control arm, you know, right, right, and right. so, and so we've 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 maxed it out just to see what it would do. But I'm here to tell you, it runs beautiful down the freeway. I bet. I mean, it just glides, you know, like a BMW. I mean, it's just it's as fast as you want to go. Hmm. That's cool. incredible. I just want to take that cam and spin it. I want to see how big of an adjustment it allows for. Knock yourself out, man. Down the road. Right, perfectly straight like that. Wow. I appreciate you letting us film this. I get into it. I was I was the one that found the bushings at America's <laughs> Best with Wes. Like we were just going through the parts catalog one day wondering like what does all this mean? Like there's right. gotta be something and we there's came, gotta be a solution to this problem I, somewhere. Well, I came up with these bushings that I had never seen before and I was like, give me a pair of them, let's just see what they do. Right. Well, they, I think this one still has its bushings on it. 
from where we did it before. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the big bushing. So it's got the. So it's it's, it's got the triple this, whammy on yeah, this thing. Yeah, say that's as much as you could ever get out of it. What it had right there. Well, I mean, she glides down the freeway, man. There ain't gonna be no death wobble out of this. <laughs> but yeah, you can actually see it move. See the. Y'all can oh, sure. You see the. Oh wait. So where you heard like this? Yeah. Is minimum. It's gonna go up from where you. Holy have. shit! So we're gonna go up from there. Yeah. You rotate. Because the, watch, watch that axle. When I go, when I push, when I pull this, you see that axle stand up? Yep, yep. And when I go this way, the axle starts rolling back. Right. That's more caster. Oh, we're wow. Up to, we're up to 13.8 right there just with. Holy jeez. I would bet you could hit 15. So no, 12 is, 12 is more than enough, I think. I, I agree. I was just kind of curious what it could get to, but. Too much, I think, is going to be the answer. Yeah, well, that's pretty. Cool. I, I, it seems like the drop brackets are probably a little excessive. Well, I would say either maybe you just don't need the big cans. Right. If you're going to do the drop brackets with adjustability, you probably don't have to do the can. Oh, on, on top of the ball joint, yeah. You probably just get away with the factory ones. You'd be up around seven or eight anyhow. Right. Because the factory bushings are only those big ones we put in. They're good for 2.3 on this side, 2.6 on this side. Right. So even if you reduce off by that, you're still at 10 degrees with right. your equipment. Right, right. That's incredible. Yeah, but being a two axle front end, you can't you can't adjust caster on the left and right, right wheel independently. They both move together, you're, correct? You're right. You do have to move them. You can kind of get a little bit of difference between them, but uh -huh. you're right. You do end up doing them collectively rather than a true independent where you can make this one like seven and this one 15. Right, but that's... You, you might be able, like we had, where there was a degree split in it, you know? Right. I think that's about as much as you're really going to see. That's oh. pretty cool. Man, that's incredible. So we were at the minimum end. <laughs> yeah, what? I can't make this one go any lower than 12.4. Okay, well that'll be good right where it's at then. Okay. Hey Wes, uh, interesting turn of events. Well, that's the minimum. If I turn the cams, it goes up from there. <laughs> I went halfway, halfway around and hit 15. So really, I guess what we're walking away, even though we've thrown the kitchen sink at this truck, because this customer is, he's, he, he wants it right, no matter what. I mean, he got to a point where his wife wouldn't drive this vehicle because of the death wobble. And so we, we'd already done the, uh, the cams, you know, on, the, on top of the, uh, the ball joints. And then, so really all we need to do is a lower control arms. We don't need the cams. We don't need the drop bracket, basically. Yeah. But. Well, I think. And the, and the new springs made a huge difference in terms of the body roll. You're going to need the cams or the bushings, one or the other. Okay. To get where you want to be. Sure. I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not sure that just choosing one of the three is going to get you there. Uh huh. I think you're going to want two out of the three. Right. Either the drop bracket with the cams. Right. Right. Or the bushings with the drop bracket. Right. You know what I mean? I would probably leave. I would probably do the lower control arms with the bushings because the bushings are fixing the camber. Oh, okay. So we're also That's true. oh, so you're also fixing the camber and the caster. So the yeah, the camber gets fixed because they're they're laid in too far. Right. The bushing stands them up on both sides. Right. And then it gives it a little bit of caster. Right. And I don't then know. I the lower all. control arms. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm telling you, the thing goes down the road. It's just incredible. I'm, I'm sure. This is the best driving excursion I've ever driven. I mean, it, <laughs> That's awesome. no shit. And I've driven a ton of them. So, so for y'all that don't understand, what he's talking about, camber is the actual the way the top of the tire leans in. Correct. And and uh, you know you get on like a BMW, you see there's a lot of on the back on the rear wheels because of the independent suspension of a BMW, and it's not a tube axle. The 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 camber helps the car turn. That's why these cars. One of the reasons why these cars handle so well. You really can't. Can't really change the split on. It. Right. If you start, like right now, and I'm, I lock the one down and tried to bring them closer together. No. They're going to work. Well, you're gonna, you'd have together. to bend the axle to get. <laughs> yeah, right. <Yeah>. right. <laughs> he looked like a pretty strong dude, but you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't think, I don't well, let's think look at Wes's like tattoos. That. I mean, let me see those tattoos, man. Look at this here. He's got push rods on his hand and gauges and camshafts and a small block Chevy uh, timing chain. Oh, pistons with a. What kind of. Oh, that's Big Daddy right there now. And. That's pretty wild, man. Oh, look at that. Coilovers on this side. I mean, if you're not a mechanic, you're pretty damn convincing, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some, I've got some, uh, the gold, uh, 
rocker arms yep. back in the day. I don't even think anybody runs those anymore. <laughs> Third gear synchro out of a Corvette transmission. Oh, there you go. That's where they always shear off. That's why I put it on my wrist. Because if you're going to wait, it's going to be at your wrists. That's the, that's, yeah, that's, that's one of those weak points in, yeah. in the human body that we test every day, right? Yep. Outstanding. It really is a joy to work with some folks that really know their shit. I mean, I mean, it's one thing to have the tools, but it's quite another thing to know what to do with it once you got it. And, man, you guys are the best. This, this, what we've done to this, this vehicle is really quite incredible. Out there. So what about this turning radius here, Wes? This is incredible. We're circling a, a Chevy Cruze. There's not an expedition in the world that can circle a cruise. Right. Yeah, we can, you're actually turning out of it a little bit because it'll go even tighter, won't it? Yeah, it will. So really, this is just a fast overall improvement in the whole way the vehicle runs and drives. That's insane. So, Wes, what's the advantage or disadvantage to, let's just say disadvantage to 12 degrees of caster? I mean, I mean, why doesn't Ford Motor Company do this? If, it, if it's so effective, then why, why did they not do this from the factory? I would say some people would complain of lack of steering returnability um, on some of your shorter wheelbase vehicles. Right. Most of these big heavy Ford chassis are so long anyway that you're not going to see a disadvantage to the added caster. It makes it more secure at highway right. speeds. Right. Um, it's so long already, it probably makes the turning radius actually a little smaller. Right. It doesn't take a barnyard to turn it around going down the road. Right, right. Well, um, yeah, I mean, these things aren't known for parking lot maneuverability. I mean, no. if that's one complaint, like Dooley's especially. I mean, crew cab Dooley is... It's just, you know, you parked it far into the parking lot and walk because it's just such a pain in the ass to try to maneuver. But, I mean, this thing just feels secure. Yeah. I mean, you, you make adjustments and it comes right back. And yeah, this is this is impressive. Well, and it's, it boosts your confidence, which is, you know, yeah. it's really the situation. This, this this man has a large family, and this is really the only vehicle that works for him and his, his family to be able to travel with one vehicle. And, you know, his wife just... You know, she scared scared the, the pants off of her one day because she was, you know, the, the damn thing went to wobbling. So yeah. they're willing to do whatever it takes to make this vehicle run right. You know. Well, I really appreciate your help, Wes. Uh, you know, you guys are good friends and, and very helpful in what you do. What's your What's your impression of driving this? Oh, it runs great. This yeah. Is, I mean, just the the feel of the steering is incredible. We can build you one. You know, all it costs is money. <laughs> You build your own. You don't need me. <laughs> it's just time. I probably, you know how it is. We hear most times when we get to running our own businesses, we have to pay everybody else to do everything for us because we don't have any time. Right, right. The cobbler's kids go barefoot, right? Yep. Um, anyway, what's your phone number again? What's the best phone number to reach you? 706-621-7116. Uh, Outstanding. Hey, thank you all for making... Power Stroke Help, Power Stroke Specialty, the number one stop on the internet for the Power Stroke Gunner Enthusiast. Thanks again, Wes. Appreciate it.